cookies or HTTP cookies specifically are a small piece of data stored on your computer. These days they're part of life as we know it, but it wasn't always this way. A web browser programmer named Lou Montulli coined the term cookie. He got the name from the term magic cookie. At the time, non-web-based programs primarily used magic cookies. In June 1994, Lou had the idea to use these cookies in web communication. At the time, he was an employee at Netscape Communications. For those of you around in the early days of the web, you might remember the browser they released, which was called Netscape Navigator. Fast forward eight years, and AOL purchased Netscape Communications in 2002 for $4.2 billion, or 3.8 billion euros, and the browser is now dead. You can still go to netscape.com in your browser, and it redirects to AOL.com. I guess at this point, it just serves as an online tombstone of the past, but back to cookies. The first use of a cookie by Netscape was to determine if a user had visited the site previously. Not much was known about cookies at the time, and they were just silently pushed out to users. On February 12, 1996, Financial Times published an article about them. This is when cookies started to gain a lot of attention, specifically for their potential privacy implications. The main reasons for concern was that Netscape placed data on users' computers, they assumed acceptance by default, and the users received no notification. Kind of ironic that 26 years later, the cookie struggle continues. Needless to say, since 1994, cookies have evolved significantly. At this exact moment, you likely have a few of the cookie types I'm about to mention stored in your browser. The first is session cookies. Session cookies have no expiration date set, which indicates to the browser that these cookies should be deleted at the end of the session. Did you ever go to a site without logging in and add something to your cart? And when you visit a different page, the items are still there? Without these session cookies, each page change would cause your cart to be empty, and that would be kind of annoying. The other main use of session cookies is website personalization. So let's say you go to duckduckgo.com, you change the theme to dark, you visit different pages, and it's still the dark theme. That's because of a cookie. If there was no cookie, it would just default to the default theme, and your preference would not be saved. So I'm going to give a quick example of this, and if you want to follow along, I'm using Firefox. So if you go to duckduckgo.com, click the hamburger menu, and then select themes going to right click, select inspect, we're going to be using the storage tab, and if we look here at the cookies header and duckduckgo.com, there are currently no cookies present. So let's say we want to change the theme, we're going to go to basic, and then we're going to refresh the page. If we go to cookies again and then select duckduckgo, we can now see that there's a cookie present. So cookies have a key value pair, so here the key is AE, I actually don't know what that stands for but the value is B. So just guessing from what the names mean on here, we can see B, I'm guessing B is for basic. So let's say we wanna to change to the terminal theme, but we don't wanna click through the browser. So to demonstrate how the cookie works, if we double click on the value, we change that to T, we click off of there, and then we click refresh. Go back to the cookie again. We can now see that the value of T has told the browser that we wanna use the terminal theme and we manipulated the setting using just the cookie value. And that same thing works for the other preferences on here. If we go to C, that should be contrast, refresh the page, and we can now see that contrast is selected. And as I mentioned earlier, session cookies have no expiration date. So if we take a look at the expires column, we can see here session, which means that once this session's over, this cookie will be deleted by the browser. So that's just a quick session cookie example and how changing the values in the cookies can manipulate the website functionality. Persistent cookies differ from session cookies in that they must have an expiration date set for a period of time. Your browser will then delete the cookie once the expiration date is reached, and this time period can range from days to even years. In the previous example where we saw the cookie we received for the theme change, that cookie also could have been a persistent cookie, which would have made it so that the theme selection we made was persistent even if we closed the session and visited the website at a later time. When you log into a website, this is the cookie that you receive. Authentication cookies ensure the delivery of sensitive content to the correct user session. These cookies have an identifier string that associates it with a user account. A funny, somewhat related story. So years ago in college, we learned what ARP poisoning was and decided to test it out in one of the dormitory buildings to see if it really worked. So what ARP poisoning does is it tricks a layer 2 device, such as a switch, into sending you all the traffic that it sees so that you can see everything going on. So needless to say, it did work we were able to see all the traffic that the switch was passing, and we were able to borrow Facebook authentication cookies from other users on the local network. So we then took the cookies, injected them into our browser, refreshed the page, and we were logged in as those users. 
That brings us to tracking cookies, which are the cookies that everyone has heard about lately. It seems like any website you visit now, you get the banner that says accept all cookies or follow the labyrinth of options to deny them. Thank you, GDPR. So there are two types of tracking cookies, first party and third party. First party means that the cookie belongs to the domain you're currently visiting, and third party means that it belongs to a different domain and is not the website that you're currently on. As an example, some cookies record which websites a user visits. The server the cookie originated from receives this information every time your web browser needs to load content from this server. With third party cookies, that means this communication process is taking place anytime your browser loads a website using the third party tracking service. This is why if you search for something on one website, you magically start to see ads across the other websites that you visit for that same product or something similar. Google Ads is a popular platform used by tens of millions of websites, which is why this happens quite frequently to a lot of people. Another third party cookie example would be you visit your local news website, which creates a first party cookie. But that local news website you visited is actually part of a larger news network, which creates a third party cookie so you can be tracked across the entire network and not just that singular site. So this last type of cookie is not common, but I find them fascinating, and that is zombie cookies. These cookies regenerate after they are deleted, hence the name zombie. Zombie cookies create backup versions of themselves outside of the typical browser storage location for cookies. This allows them to then recreate themselves after they've been deleted. You shouldn't see these types of cookies used with any reputable websites that you visit. These are typically used in shady situations where whatever you're looking at isn't exactly legal to begin with, and your privacy is not the website owner's main concern. So with that overview of cookies, it's easy to see how this small piece of data could affect your privacy. Besides the fact that these services are collecting your data, you as the user also lack control over what these services do with your data after they collect it. There are some privacy laws that govern the use of personal data, but at the current time, these primarily apply in the EU. This is why you now see that banner when you visit websites. Users must now agree to cookies unless they are strictly necessary for the website to function. The first is blocking third-party cookies. Most browsers have a setting to block these, and it's a good idea to either enable it or make sure it's enabled. I'll leave a link below to my website with some guides on how to check this in popular browsers. The second is using a plugin called Cookie Auto Delete. Typically when you close a tab, these tracking cookies and persistent cookies live on in the background. This is why when you visit a website that you've logged into previously and you go back there again, even after closing the tab, you are still logged in. This is convenient, but that also means that other less desirable cookies can also live on in the background. Cookie auto delete takes care of that. All cookies related to that site you are visiting are deleted once you close the tab. Since that means all your authentication cookies will also be wiped, that means every time you visit a website you previously logged into, you'll have to log into again, which can be a little annoying at first. The plugin does offer the ability to allow certain website cookies to remain after you close the tab, but personally I just let it wipe all cookies and don't worry about it.